That intro is a little over the top, but here's the deal. My name is Nate. This is my brother's dog, Stella. And this channel is all about cataloging my journey to learning how to live self-sufficiently and sustainably in harmony with this beautiful piece of land that I get to call home here in the Southeast of Costa Rica. Now, if I'm gonna be self-sufficient, I probably have to learn how to grow my own food, right? But here's the catch. So the good news is that I live in the humid tropics. That means tons of rain and I can grow year round. The not so good news is that all of the open land with fertile soil and already established garden beds is in the lowlands where my brother lives. Now I live up the mountain in a wooden cabina where no one's called home for about six years now. In some ways, that's a great thing. So around the cabina, the land used to be kept pretty clear, but over the past half decade, nature has done her thing and seeded all of these plants to help with this evolution as the ecosystem returns back to jungle. Now that means over this time period, that land has had living roots in the soil, keeping it alive, adding organic material and doing nature's work. But there's a piece of land right next to the cabina that I now call the main garden, which is gonna be the focus of this video, that had basically nothing growing in it. There was some grass, but it wasn't too healthy. But other than that, it was just degraded tropical clay. Now, the person who used to live in the cabina before me actually built this really neat bamboo structure enclosing this area of land with a shade cloth wall and a bioplastic roof so that they could have a garden. But they never actually touch the soil. Now saying it's soil is a bit generous, so I'm kind of starting from scratch. And this video is gonna be showing you guys how I went from degraded, lonely clay into a garden. Now we're gonna actually have to go back in time from when I was just taking videos on my iPhone, vertical, the quality's terrible, but I wanna show you guys the whole process. I hope you guys enjoy, let me know what you think, and let's get into it. So step number one was to take down this bamboo structure. Now I left the walls intact, at least for now, but I took apart all of the broken down dilapidated bamboo that formed the roof structure. Step number two was to figure out what in the world am I gonna do to turn this degraded tropical clay into soil. As I poured through my old notes on organic gardening and building soil, I realized that probably the best thing I could do was to build a Hugo Coulter. Now Hugo Coulters are awesome ways to create gardens with long lasting fertility. The general idea is that we're creating a mound of organic material that will slowly break down over time and turn into like a humus based sponge that can soak up water and kind of functions like a huge city for microorganisms. The general structure is something as follows. You either dig a hole or you just pile up on top of the soil and you layer kind of lasagna style carbon rich materials and then more nitrogen rich materials. So usually what you would do is at the bottom you would put nice big pieces of wood like full logs if you'd like. If they're more degraded then they're going to turn into soil quicker but you can use fresh logs if you'd like. And then on top of that you do more nitrogen rich stuff. That could be green plant clippings, it could be food scraps, it could be compost, what have you. And then as you go up, you start using smaller or more broken down carbon inputs. And when you get close to the top, you usually do a layer of the native topsoil. That could be the soil that you dug if you made a hole. And then on top, if you can, you do some compost so that you can plant directly into it and know that those plants will have some nutrition readily available at the start of their life. Once I knew I wanted to build a Hugo Coulter, I mapped it out. I used some sticks to kind of lay out the terrain of what I wanted it to look like. And I ended up settling on this kind of cool keyhole design where there was a straight section. And then at the end, it wrapped around the bamboo pole that was at the center of the garden. I kind of liked how this turned out, but I needed time to gather all of the materials, the wood 
and, and, and more importantly, to think about where I was gonna get the more nitrogen-based materials. In the meantime, I started thinking about what else I could do here in this, in this garden space. So every day, I would come out to the garden at different points to figure out how the sun exposure shifted over the course of the day to see where would be a nice sunny spot to build another garden bed. And I ended up settling on this area at the front of the garden. The way I wanted to create this other bed would be sort of like a quasi Hugo Coulter. I felt like I probably wouldn't have enough wood to do the whole main Hugo Coulter and put more wood at the bottom of this bed. So instead, I just dug about six to eight inches deep and then I refilled it with about 50% organic material and 50% the original clay. So get to see how that got put together now. All right, we got an update here at the Cabina on this raised bed, sort of raised. Digging out the clay here. So yesterday I did this section here. So it's 50% clay and then more or less 50% leaves and 50% 50, 50 uh, the shredded down, broken down tree. This was full of grass before. Some rocks, been putting those to good use. Here we are, baby. Boom, bada, bing. After I finally finished the first bed, which made me so happy and got me so excited, it was like my biggest achievement back in that day, I got to work on the Hugo Coulter. And step number one was digging a big hole. After that, I backfilled it with the wood, with grass clippings from a nice patch of grass down in the lowlands, with dry leaves, with green leaves from the soda caballos that I pruned. And I just kept on doing this lasagna style until we had a pretty nice looking mound. And it looked really good by the time I was finished and it got me really, really stoked for the future of this garden and life here at the Cabina. And eventually I decided to put some seeds in the ground. All right, quick video for you here. I just sewed some beans into the Hugo Coulter. So check this out, looks kind of cool. So we've got worm compost sprinkled on top of the Hugo Coulter. And then these are all store-bought beans. So you got black, white, and red. Um, the black, I believe, are turtle beans. Not sure about the white and red. This for me is basically a, a cover crop. I really just want to get roots in the ground. Make sure you stay tuned to see how the garden develops over time. Even in this short video, quite a lot happens. But anyways, so after I built the two beds, I started to realize that there probably wouldn't be enough light getting to this garden to support healthy plants. But luckily, a lot of the trees that were casting the shade on this area were these trees called soda caballos that have been planted years and years ago to help hold in the soil and prevent erosion. Now the really nice thing about these trees is that they respond very well to pruning. You can chop them back to the point where there's not a single leaf left and they will regrow with vigor and be as happy as ever before. So I got to work on pruning those, opening up the canopy and giving more light to this garden. And in the process, some interesting stuff happened. Check it out. What's up farm fam? Uh, it's been a rainy day today. And so you can see there the bamboo on that far side is down. Um, one of the pieces was already breaking. And then when I was trimming a soda caballo by those coconuts over there, it fell down and it, and it really did a number on it. So uh, we just said chow to that bamboo. And then at that point, I'm just looking at it and like it became obvious pretty quickly that let's just expand the garden. So now we're going to go all the way to the ridge. So here is a brush pile from trimming the soda caballos. So I've raked up all of the the brush that was on top over here onto the ridge line so it starts to really drop down so i wanted to shore this up and also doubles as fertility for these coconuts which have really been struggling but yes yeah, so now we have all of this space opened up over here really doesn't get much light at all because this coconut um, but here is going to be a beautiful spot for planting i don't know exactly how it's going to be laid out i really don't know at all but uh i'll let the garden kind of talk to me as i keep on cleaning up and these plantanillos will come out. Now it's time to show you guys how things have changed with the first two garden beds. So in the process of pruning these trees, I also ended up starting some plants and putting some of those in the first garden bed. 
So we've got sunflower, holy basil, some beans. You'll see. Check it out. I just trimmed all of the weeds that were growing here that just sprouted up on their own. They'd gotten pretty big. They looked really pretty. Um, but I got some beans planted on the outside here. So now they've got some extra fertility. And now for the Hugo Coulter. The Hugo Coulter got a lot of beans sewed into it. And when they all sprouted, I, I pushed them back and made a bunch of circles. There might be like 12 of them or something like that, um, where I planted stuff. So flowers, okra, sunflowers, eggplant. There's going to be a couple more things that go in here. There's two more circles left. Um, and then just today, I put these wood shavings from a local wood processing facility. Fast forward a few weeks and now it was time to do some maintenance on the Hugo and the sea of beans that had grown. Yeah, here we are. So this was just a mat of green for the most part on the top. And I was just going through, starting at the edges, uh, finding nice looking beans and then just chopping all of the ones around it. And as I did that, as you can see, I started layering all of those bean shoot growth uh, around the transplants. Don't click out of the video just yet because there's still tons of progress and evolution with the Hugo Coulter and the first upper bed. But now it's time to start working on the expansion. good fun sweating quite a bit great exercise and now we're gonna backfill this with this clay mixed with rice husks and so that'll serve as organic matter that will eventually decompose and, and help this soil or this clay I should say turn into soil also got some leftover calcium over here my brother bought a bunch for for his garden it's supposed to do a lot of good for clay to help break it up and help increase the tilth and, and make it more soil like but uh, so Hugo Coulter here, the first bed I made right here. Check her out, very pretty. These beds are hmm, maybe two months old. Could be a bit less. So I'm gonna do beds here, and then I'm thinking something's gotta go in this little section here. Because this gets sun and it's pretty flat. And then this slope will be something else. Maybe I'll but sweet potato or something that kind of crawls. We have chaya growing here, stuck in the ground. They're slowly starting to grow. And I planted some root crops in here as well that haven't poked out quite yet. But yeah, that's what's going on. So updates to come as I keep progressing with this project here. Had some unfortunate technical difficulties and I didn't have any footage of me finishing that first bed but don't worry there's two more to come now the second bed I actually put footage of me putting that together on another video so let's forget about that one for now we'll catch a highlight from me making that bed and then we'll go on to the third bed enjoy <music>
one's lagging behind, but she was put in late. Let's get a Sol Gigantes. Real good looking. They got the bigger leaves and the leaves kind of cup up like that. It's a nice cloudy day, which I don't mind. Yesterday and the day before were just so hot. So a nice little change of pace. But yeah, things are looking good. Finally spotted some beans in here. So let's see if I can find them again. Annual Mexican sunflowers looking pretty. Yeah, I think it was over here. Let me take a take a seat here on the bench, see if we can find ourselves a bean. There she is. Can I get it to focus on the bean? Thought I was filming an entire update. Turns out the video stopped after a few seconds and then it restarted again later on near the end. So that was weird. Don't know how that worked. So today we got some okay rain, nothing crazy. So this is good, especially after a couple of hot days. Hopefully it continues, but it looks like it's, yeah, who knows? I don't know, I'm not a, I'm not a meteorologist. And I think things are looking good. I think the curves of these wood, pieces is very cool like that one's crazy it's got a lot going on chugging along and i think we're just about done for today it's going to be dark pretty soon it's raining guys and i am happy to see it let's get some water so let's show you our rain collection set up in action yeah that's what we like to see. In the past, when it was dry season, when it was raining hard like this, I would be out here with one of these buckets and I'd be like transferring water from these to the big tank in the back. But, like when they start to get full, like this trash can, I would start bringing it back to the tank, getting soaked. And look at that, the sunflower in the rain, strutting her stuff, yeah. Life is good when it's wet. A day on the homestead when it's raining. It's nice and relaxed. The weather is so cool. It's just chill. It's a chill vibe. It, it kind of relaxes you, taking in the, the beautiful acoustics too of, of a rainy day. It's nice. And it's a, it's a good opportunity to, to take some time for yourself or just kind of slow down. But all right, over and out for now. Good morning, farm fam. Garden's looking great. Had a wonderful rain, not only yesterday, but this morning as well. The sunflower getting pollinated. So I'm feeling good. The garden's got me buzzing. So the sunny morning did not last, as you can see. What is going on? Uh, last two days, didn't really do any vlogging. They've been really rainy. Today also looks pretty cloudy, so... Ooh, did you hear that? All right, so yeah, it's been cloudy, it's rainy, yada yada. There must be an aura pendulum in that tree there. 
Can you hear that? That's the noise I was talking about earlier in one of my other videos about how they sound almost computer generated. They're definitely robots. It's the craziest noise. Like, have you ever heard an animal make a noise like that? This one looks prettier now that she's opened up more. I was really hating on her in the beginning. She had this really dark center. But hey, they're all pretty in their own way. Oh, we got a bee on this sunflower. Perfect timing. She's not totally open yet. I would love to know where these bees go because that looks like a honeybee to me. And then here we got another one opening up with a grasshopper munching. Another bee on this one. That's the content we're looking for. Might have been the same bee. Still pretty cool. And this girasol gigante is growing because I used to be able to look right down at this flower head and now it's too tall and I gotta bend it. So she is definitely growing. Looking pretty good, huh? We're making progress. It's got me jazzed up. I love seeing a garden come together. One of the best feelings working here on the farm is once you complete a project like this and you know there's gonna be food and living plants here eventually. But I like the way this looks. It's kind of paying respects to this tree here. Tried to work around her, kind of like I did in the slope garden. The keeping the tree's integrity and, and respecting her space was a big part of how that, that garden got designed. So I like the way this looks. Everything's kind of pointing to her. Yeah, it's nice. I don't actually know what she is, to be honest with you. She might be a guanabana. did a thing looks okay what do you think totally not symmetrical <laughs> but it could be worse yeah the idea is mexican sunflowers which will be huge bushes big bush trees it's a cool lead-in to, to the new garden and it's starting to look more like just one big garden we'll come over here and get a, get a look from this side of the hugo Coulter. With Rosita in the background, taking a little snooze. 
It's just so cool to see it coming together. Three months ago, this was just a completely different world. And so is this, like everything's really changed. But at least this part of the bed, it was still pretty clear. Like there was a bunch of trash on it and a bunch of rotten bamboo. But it was, it was clear and you could see all the ground for the most part. But here, here was just, first of all, behind the bamboo wall. And then also like overgrown with all sorts of stuff, basically under canopy. And, and yeah, it just looks nothing like this. This is, this is really cool. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty cool, pr pretty cool. I'm pretty happy about this. Pretty, pretty happy. But yeah, I hope you enjoy watching me put some rocks in a circle. We got some progress getting made on the new bed. Tried to use the rake to take up the topsoil, expose a little bit more and have some soil to, to put back in amended. So I have that now. So the plan here, put some organic matter. In, in our cacao field, we have, we have a slope on the farm that has like maybe 200, 250 cacao trees, something like that. But there was yucca growing there at once. We, the, the people that used to live here planted some yucca and then it got Basically it wasn't managed. And that yucca just went wild and just propagated across the entire slope, more or less. So it needs to get cut every couple of months. So I'm gonna go over there. It's been a while since we cleaned it and I'm gonna get some of those shoots. I'm gonna bring them up here. I'm extorting a little bit from the cacao slope, but I wanna get this bed some organic matter. So we're gonna put those in the bottom. So I'm gonna do the yucca leaves, the yucca stems, all just the green ones. If they're like nice and hardy, then they'll just regrow. But if it's green, it should just decompose. Then I'm gonna get this soil, amend it with the brush that came on top and a little bit more leaves. Also do like the same volume and rice husks. So this will be like a nice loose mix. Put that on top. That should hopefully get me to the top of the wood. And that's the plan. So now it's off to the cacao slope. Got cacao husks in here, pretty broken down already. And then underneath we got the yucca. Did find some yucca along the way some some actual plants that were like well rooted and and had produced some some yucca so this is going to be on the menu looking pretty good check out the birds how about that that's so cool there's so many
you made it. Mission complete. We have now built a new garden and the moment you've all been waiting for, let's get some drone footage. Thank you so much for watching guys i hope you enjoyed the journey as much as i did don't forget to subscribe so you can see how the garden evolves over time and please give me any ideas or feedback that you have whether that's about how i built the gardens or the video and the way i edited it or ideas for what i can do in the future with that garden space or how i can improve the soil i would love to connect with you guys and get any info i can my life is one dedicated to learning how best to serve and live with the land so I'll take any info I can get. Cheers, I'll see you guys in the next one.